Welcome to the channel. My name is Griffin. I'm a senior UX designer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And today I'm going to give you some really important tips about how to stand out as a UX designer or product designer this year. So it goes without saying that in 2025, we're continuing to see increased layoffs and a more cautious approach from companies in terms of hiring new UX designers, especially those with little to no work experience. February 2025 alone saw over 9,000 layoffs in the tech industry, with UX roles being hit the hardest. There's also been a shift toward more hybrid UX roles where UX designers are being asked to take on more product management and front-end development work too. And this convergence has reduced the demand for specialized UX designers even more. So although the UX job market looks as bad as it ever has the past few years, the good news is there's plenty of UX job postings out there, from junior roles all the way up to principal and managerial design roles. But you're going to need to stand out from the competition now more than ever when job postings can often have thousands of applicants. So let's dive into how you can set yourself apart from other UX designers in 2025. First, you need to have a rock solid portfolio. And this means that it not only looks good visually, but clearly tells who you are and what you're going to bring to companies that are looking at your website. When recruiters and hiring managers are looking at your resume and portfolio to screen whether you're a suitable candidate for the role that you applied for, they're going to very quickly get a good impression of whether your skills and experience fit the requirements that they're looking for. So let's take a look at my website for example. So right off the bat you can tell it's very simple but it gives you an immediate understanding of who I am, a preview of my favorite design projects, and then a preview of my about page where I highlight my years of experience as a designer which is something that will jump out to recruiters especially when they're scanning my portfolio. The second thing about your website is your case studies have to show your design process and problem solving capabilities. So let's take a look at this design systems case study and how I laid out the project from beginning to end. So I start off with a quick look at a few different components in the design system because visuals are your best friend when it comes to showcasing your work here. Then I give a brief background about the project and I describe the problem that prompted this design systems project. And then most of this design system case study is just documenting my design process and thought process and also including visuals along the way. If you want to take a look at this entire case study, I'll leave a link below and you can check it out. And then toward the end, I point out the impact that this design system had on my team's design process and close it with a few key takeaways from working on this project. I used Framer to build my portfolio. And if you want to build a site like mine, I'll include a link in the description to the free template that I used as a starting point for my Framer project. The next thing that's going to help you stand out as a UX designer, you probably could have guessed, it's artificial intelligence. I can confidently say that your job as a UX designer is not going to be taken by AI in the near future, but what I will say is that you will be outpaced by other UX designers that know how to use AI and use it to their advantage in their UX design process. There are so many different ways that you can incorporate AI into your UX design process, but I'll touch on a few that I think are the most important right now. The first way you can use it is for user research, specifically using it for automated data analysis. AI tools can synthesize large data sets from data like user interviews, surveys, and behavioral analytics, and give you summaries and identify patterns from that data. It can also give you personalized user personas by synthesizing demographic and behavioral data, which will ensure that your designs align with your target audience. Another big one is using AI for prototyping and wireframing. There are plenty of AI tools out there at this point, like UIZard, for example, that can take sketches or text prompts to generate interactive prototypes and wireframes. You can also adhere to accessibility standards using AI. You can have AI tools scan your wireframes and prototypes to make sure that they adhere to WCAG guidelines. And you can also have the same tools suggest adjustments for color contrast, font size, and screen reader compatibility as well. One of the last ways I want to touch on that you can use AI to supercharge your UX design workflow is using it for design implementation and handoff. Many of the most popular AI tools out there right now can take your Figma designs and turn them into production-ready code in forms like CSS and React. Anthropic's Claude in particular can give you really sophisticated code that will actually work in the real world. And that will allow you to skip a lot of that tedious development process if that ever is a part of one of your projects. A few other tools I recommend you get familiar with are ChatGPT, Galileo, and UXPilot. If you want to dive deeper into how UX design is applied to AI-based products and you're up for spending some money, Stanford has a popular online course called UI UX Design for AI Products, and I'll include a link to that in the description. If you're not already experimenting with AI in your design process, now is the time to start. And at this point, it's not just a tool, it's your edge over all the other designers that you'll be competing with in the job market. Lastly, something you can't avoid when getting 
getting a new job is the interview process, sometimes several rounds of interviews for a single job. So you're going to want to polish up your speaking skills and be able to articulate your design process. Your portfolio is going to be what catches the company's attention and gets your foot in the door. But what's going to seal the deal and get you that job offer that you so desperately want is being able to articulate your experience and skill set and your design process when you're presenting your case studies. Because when you're talking to a hiring manager or design lead, they're not just looking at your pretty mock-ups. They want to know how you got there, why you made those decisions, and why you're the designer that they can't afford to pass up. In 2025 especially, UX designers are problem solvers that bridge business needs with user needs. And when you present your case studies, you're not just showing before and afters. You're telling a story that proves you're strategic, user-focused, and ready to solve real-world problems. So there you have it. If you have a strong and clear portfolio, you understand how to use AI to your advantage in UX design, and your interview skills are nailed down, you will land a UX design job this year and it's gonna feel super rewarding once it happens. Again, my name is Griffin, I'm a senior UX designer. Check out my website at griffinwoldridge.com and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email. I'll see you guys in the next video, thanks for watching.